sorry I got cut off there. So if there's a gallbladder or bile duct obstruction, um, this herb could actually be quite dangerous. So it's contraindicated where um, gallstones could be blocking the um, gallbladder or the duct, or it's also contraindicated with um, extreme liver disease. Um, but used in homeopathic doses, it's actually used for liver diseases like um, liver cancer and um, cirrhosis and fatty livers. So the name of this herb is Chelidonium and it's also called Greater Celandine. Chelid refers to swallows in, um, in Latin and there are various reasons. I've heard that they say it flowers when the swallows arrive here and it withers when swallows depart. I've also heard that swallows feed the seeds to their young or that swallows also um, feed on the plant, but I don't know if any of this is true. This usually grows in um, off the edges of walls and in shady parts but the sunlight affects the um, plant's um, chemical balance and um, sun, sunlight actually affects the alkaloid biosynthesis. This plant contains 40 alkaloids of a class called isoquinolol alkaloids. One of them is spartane, which is also in um, citrusus in broom, and that is an anti-convulsant and anti-arrhythmic chemicals but it's only like a, one of the small amounts of alkaloids in this plant. It also contains these proto-berberin alkaloids like berberin, chelithrin, chelidonin, coctacin, sanguarin which is also in bloodroot as I said before and these isoquinolol alkaloids um, um, depress something called CYP 2D6 and CYP3A4 um, cytokine enzymes in the liver so that means that doses of this plant can actually um, interfere with certain drug metabolism so you have to be careful and know what you're doing. The alkaloid chelithrine is antibacterial, anti-cancer and it affects um, the endoplasmic reticulum the sarcoplasmic reticulum in cells and lowers protein kinase. The chelidonin is an anti-cholinesterase inhibitor, so that means this plant has a role in neuroprotection with um, conditions that are linked with cognitive decline like Alzheimer's and different types of dementia. Coptacin, another bitter alkaloid in this plant, um, is antispasmodic, has um, an anti-leukemia effect and has also been shown to reduce um, non-cancerous um, lesions of the liver including hepatomas. What's interesting about this fact as I said is that it's a very potent herb and it has a low therapeutic index and a low therapeutic index means that its toxic dose is very close to its therapeutic dose. So. Um, last time I looked, I think the tincture dose was about 1 in 10, 20 mils a week. Um, but in a lot of um, Eastern European countries and in the Baltic region, it's been used as a tea. I'll talk a bit more about that in a, in a minute. Um, studies on the herb have shown that um, having a tincture, a mother tincture of 10% a day, 20 drops a day, actually shortened the lifespan of active COVID-19. Something that I learned when I was researching this plant that was quite interesting is that it can be dried out and actually burnt um, in ceremony and also um, the incense of it is made to deter mosquitoes. It's also used as a talisman for protection. Um, it's also concentrated um, to um, used as a poison for certain birds and fish um, and what's interesting is traditional ways of preserving this plant is actually extracting the devil's milk the yellow sappy latex alkaloid and drying it into pellets um, I know that in certain parts of Europe 
it was dried in the heat of the summer but in the shade this um, remedy has also been used in veterinary medicine and um, a solution of it's been made to um, put on infected um, udders of cows although if uh, cows actually eat this plant they will vomit in Chinese medicine the aerial pods are used and the flowers are used and it's bitter, pungent, slightly warming and toxic. It enters the lung, heart, kidney meridians and the daily dose is six to three grams of leaf a day used with other herbs and it's used in um, cancer management where a condition called deficient pain is uh, manifesting and it nourishes the organs, it replenishes chi and blood and it stops coughing and at a very low dose it helps with toxicity. Um, the pronunciation and pinyin I'm not sure but I think it's Bay Q Sao. Um, apologies for that horrendous um, pronunciation. In homeopathy it's used in sort of micro energetic doses for liver cancer. It's also used um, to lower the mitotic index of cancer cells. And there have actually been studies on the homeopathic doses. And it was also shown to stop um, or inhibit sperm motility. And in a lot of traditions, um, it's used as an amenagogue. And also, um, even though it's medicinal in certain ways to the room, it also lowers fertility. So in homeopathy, it's often used for right-sided conditions, for right-sided pneumonia, for feeling very bilious and nauseous, for vomiting easily, for a patient who's very hot and doesn't want to be touched and has a spasmodic cough, often at the end stage of advanced chronic disease. Nicholas Culpepper describes this herb as um, having affinities to the eye and, illum and the eyes are receptive to the luminaries of the sky. And historically in, U in Europe, this herb has been primarily as an eye, an eye remedy. Um, Pliny described um, a, a treatment called Chelidonia, an eye lotion. And in the Middle Ages, this herb was used for skin ulcers, for herpes, for what they described as sort of genital sores, which I can only um, assume are um, sexually transmitted infections. It was also used for, the root was used for toothache and then gargles. Dioscorides boiled the herb with honey and specified it must be in a, grug, in a, a, a brass container. And he also described it with white wine and anise for herpes, leprosy, and syphilis and also in white wine for jaundice. In Poland the herb has been used as an infusion of just the young leaves so like this part of the plant not the older leaves and I suspect when um, the directions of using younger leaf plants is because they're less toxic than the older ones that have accumulated many um, sort of you know bitter harsh alkaloids that will make you vomit What's interesting, as a sort of baby herbalist, I used to go around trying all the herbs, and this is the only herb I've ever had that has made me vomit just from trying it. And here again is um, just some of the latex you can see that can just be applied on um, warts and verrucas, and, um, and also I've used it in mixes for something called actinic keratosis for people that have really thick um, areas of skin but it's something I wouldn't really use in ulcerated skin because it's, it's got the property called escherotic and it actually can dissolve um, the membranes of the skin and make um, some like ulcerative skin conditions much worse and I would caution using this plant if you don't know what you're doing. This herb's also been used to expel roundworms and tradition is drunk every day for 12 days. Something that's really important about this plant is actually that it shouldn't be taken chronically because um, cumulatively it does cause liver disease. 
the plant's been studied um, for its anti-cancer um, properties and it's anti-proliferative, it's pro-apoptotic, which means that it, for some cells it induces um, cell death, cell program cell death, um, cell death that usually doesn't happen in cancer. Cancer cells just carry on dividing against all the kind of rules of the body. Um, it's cytostatic, so it makes cells stay in the right place and at very high doses. It's a chemotherapy and it interferes with the microtubule um, formation in something called mitosis and it causes cell cycle arrest. And alkaloids in the plants also block an enzyme called tel um, telomerase. Um, you'd have to look that up. It's also got a chemical in it called stylopene, and stylopene's also in another poppy family plant called Corridalis impatiens, and it's present in the leaf of the plant, and it lowers nitric oxide, it lowers prostaglandin E2, tumor, necrosis factor, alpha, and it's also parasitic. This herb, as I said, is also anti-helminthic, it kills worms. What's interesting is that in some um, traditional Chinese medicine, um, as I said before, it's used in cancer pain that's called obstructive or deficient pain. And it's also used with centipedes, scorpions, resins, and monkhood root, and also Corridalis rhizome. And um, that's for like, you know, extreme pain management. And it's also used with moxibustion, moxibustion, and acupuncture points in um, very specific places. And the reason I'm saying this is that herbs alone are not a fix all. And even though I've talked about the chemicals in this plant, um, herbs need to be used in combination with other herbs, um, very carefully in prescriptions. And also herbal medicine requires other things such as touch, massage, good food, movement, care, love. All these things um, go hand in hand, addressing political injustice. All these things go hand in hand with herbal medicine and with any um, kind of uh, me medicinal system that's holistic. I'm going to finish off here by saying that the actions of a plant, uh, how they're broadly described in pharmacology, doesn't always relate to the energetics of the plant. That's very, very important. But what I will say is, this plant is anti-tumoral, it's antiviral, and it's um, got a chemical in it called glycaminoglycan that's shown to inhibit HIV migration, and also re um, blocks reverse transcriptase. It also inhibits adenoviruses. It's got chemicals called phytocyclostatins that are theoprotease inhibitors it's antifungal, it's diuretic, it's antispasmodic, it's anti-mosquito, it's alterative, that means it changes directions of an illness, it's anti-inflammatory. I'm going to end by reading a bit from Nicholas Culpepper. I'm going to stop the video here because it's not going to upload very well, but I'll end the video by reading some Nicholas Culpepper.